The Battle of Slim Buttes took place in Harding County, South Dakota, on September 9th and 10th, 1876, involving the Sioux and the United States Army. After the devastating battles at Rosebud and Little Bighorn in Montana in June 1876, General Philip H. Sheridan, leading the Department of Missouri, directed Generals Alfred Terry and George Crook to pursue the Native American warriors and their followers. By September, the generals had yet to locate any Native American bands and parted ways upon reaching the mouth of Powder River in Montana. General Crook then headed eastward toward the Little Missouri River in western North Dakota, anticipating the presence of the Indians. Upon crossing the river, he observed that all Indian trails appeared to lead toward the Black Hills. Despite dwindling provisions, he opted to embark on the 200-mile journey south. The column of soldiers, totaling around 2,000 men, eventually earned the moniker Crook's Starvation March. Continuous rain over several days had scorched the prairie, leaving scant grazing for the horses. Despite the adversity, they managed to cover approximately 25 to 35 miles each day. However, as they pressed on, numerous horses and mules succumbed to exhaustion and were subsequently slaughtered to provide sustenance for the men, who were nearly devoid of provisions. As the campaign pressed on into the autumn season, General Crook's force faced dwindling supplies and fatigued soldiers. On September 7, 1876, the troops arrived at the Grand River. General Crook opted to dispatch 150 men led by Captain Anson Mills of the 3rd Cavalry to make an urgent journey to Deadwood, South Dakota, and procure food and provisions. Unexpectedly, on September 8, while the column led by Captain Anson Mills was en route to the Black Hills, Frank Gruard, the chief scout, spotted an Indian village situated at Slim Buttes along both banks of a small stream named Rabbit Creek. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that the village was inhabited by Oglala Chief American Horse and his followers, along with members of the Minikunju, Brule, and Cheyenne tribes, totaling 37 lodges and approximately 260 individuals, including 30 to 40 warriors. Upon receiving this intelligence, Captain Mills instructed the troops to conceal themselves in a ravine, intending to launch an attack on the village the following morning. In the early hours of September 9th, a group of 25 men remained to guard the pack train, while Lt. John W. Bubb led the troopers of Mills's 3rd Cavalry in an assault on the village consisting of 37 lodges. The attack was ruthless, resulting in casualties among men, women, and children. Caught off guard, the Indians managed to escape by cutting through the back of some of their rawhide teepees. After exchanging gunfire with the soldiers, they fled into the surrounding brush and ravines, taking their deceased and injured with them. Two members of Company E sustained injuries. Lieutenant Adolphus von Letwitz was wounded in the kneecap, and Private Curran suffered a gunshot wound to the thigh. Von Letwitz's injury was severe, necessitating the amputation of part of his leg. After ensuring the safety of their women and children, the Indians regrouped and encircled the soldiers. In the relentless barrage of gunfire, casualties mounted, including women and children. When the shooting eventually died down, Captain Crawford instructed J.A. Kirkwood to lead a team of five men to search all the lodges for any remaining Indians, but they found none. The Indians who managed to flee quickly spread word of the attack to neighboring villages. At the same time, in a nearby ravine, certain Indians were engaging the troops on the skirmish line. John Wenzel, from Company E, was fatally shot through the forehead. Despite efforts by Private Kirkwood and Private Klevensky to approach the Indians from the west side, their attempts were unsuccessful. Kirkwood sustained a flesh wound in the side, while Sergeant Glass suffered a shattered arm. After the Indians retreated, several soldiers ventured into the abandoned village to assess its contents. They seized numerous supplies from the Indians, such as over 5,500 pounds of dried meat, substantial quantities of dried fruits, robes, ammunition, arms, and several hundred ponies. Additionally, the troopers recovered items from the Battle of Little Bighorn, including a 7th Cavalry Regiment flag attached to Chief American Horses Lodge, the blood-stained gauntlets of Captain Miles Keogh, 30 saddles, three Seventh Cavalry horses, and various personal belongings belonging to the soldiers who perished in the battle. A sum of $11,000 was discovered in one teepee. Subsequently, the village was set ablaze. 
While this was happening, Captain Mills dispatched three soldiers to General Crook with a message declaring the capture of an Indian village. Upon receiving this news, Crook was furious since his main concern was to provide food for his men. He had specifically instructed Mills to bypass any large village to avoid conflict. The following day, the Indians bolstered their forces and launched an assault on the soldiers. General Crook arrived around 11.30 a.m., and the skirmish persisted, during which U.S. scout Jonathan White sustained a fatal gunshot wound to the forehead inflicted by the Indians. A band of Indians led by Chief American Horse sought refuge in a ravine but faced overwhelming odds and ultimately surrendered. Chief American Horse sustained a gunshot wound to the abdomen during the conflict and passed away several days afterward. By the battle's conclusion, the Indian forces swelled to approximately 800 warriors, outnumbered by Crook's contingent, which comprised 2,000 troops. Later that evening, Chief Crazy Horse and his group approached to confront the soldiers. However, upon discovering the full force present, they retreated following a brief clash. The skirmish resulted in five casualties, among them Private Edward Kennedy, whose injuries were severe enough to lead to his death during a subsequent amputation. The total casualties among the Indians were unclear as many of their deceased were removed from the battlefield. Nonetheless, the soldiers discovered a makeshift grave in the ravine where the women had interred four warriors, six women, and thirteen children. Captain Mills's unit suffered three fatalities and fourteen injuries. The following day, the three soldiers and Von Ludwig's amputated leg were laid to rest. To avoid detection by the Indians, the men built a substantial fire atop the burial site. On September 10th, the unit proceeded toward Deadwood, transporting the wounded soldiers on stretchers. While being transported, Lieutenant Von Ludwig repeatedly claimed that the Indians were mutilating his leg, which was indeed found to be true. The subsequent day, Major Mason was dispatched with five companies of the 5th Cavalry to investigate. They discovered that the bodies of the fallen soldiers had been exhumed, dismembered, and their bones shattered. The Battle of Slim Butte signaled the first major victory for the U.S. Army in the Great Sioux War of 1876. Subsequent engagements in the autumn and winter persuaded many Sioux and Cheyenne fighters of the futility of their resistance against the soldiers. In August 1920, the Slim Buttes Battlefield Monument was unveiled. Positioned approximately half a mile northwest of the battle site, the monument commemorates the events. Adjacent to the monument are three grave markers honoring the fallen military personnel. Edward D. Kennedy, Company C, 5th U.S. Cavalry. Jonathan White, U.S. Scout. John Wenzel served in Company A of the 3rd U.S. Cavalry. The monument stands off South Dakota Highway 20, mile west of South Dakota Highway 79, approximately one mile west of Riva, South Dakota. Additionally, a roadside historical marker has been installed adjacent to Highway 20.